Hey friends, welcome back to Homestead on a Prayer. I hope you're having a great day on this cold, gloomy day here. It's a perfect day to bake some cookies. And I also thought it was the perfect chance to test out this vanilla sugar. We made this vanilla sugar together a few weeks ago. We made all kinds of delicious vanilla goodies that day. And our vanilla sugar has been sitting with the beans for a few weeks now. So I think today is a great chance to test it out. Today we're going to be making snickerdoodle cookies. They are some of the easiest cookies to make and they are one of my family's favorites. And it's also a great way to use something special like vanilla sugar because the vanilla sugar is, or the sugar is really the finishing touch on these cookies. So it's a great time to use something a little extra special. We're going to start by adding two sticks of softened butter right into the sand mixer here. I'm doubling this recipe today because, because we have a family event that we're going to tonight and I want to have enough cookies to bring to the event and still be able to have some for my family. Snickerdoodles are one of my son's favorite cookies so we have to make sure that we have extra for our family. So two sticks of butter into the stand mixer. Here. Next we're going to measure out one and a half cups of sugar and I'm going to add that right in with the butter. Now you may have noticed this new attachment that I have on my stand mixer here. This is called a beater blade. The beater blade company was kind enough to send me this attachment to try out. And I have really been loving it so far for creaming butter and sugar together. I mean, basically how it works is it has the silicone attachment edge on the edge of the, on the edge of the beater. And so it scrapes your bowl as it mixes, which I've really been enjoying because I don't have to stop my mixer to scrape down, just to scrape down the bowl. Really my favorite feature about this beater blade is the way it scrapes down the sides of the bowl and it also scrapes the bottom of the bowl. I find that it really makes sure that every little bit's incorporated. So I am just going to set the stand mixer up. We're going to let it cream the butter and sugar together for just a few minutes to get really light and fluffy. Then I'll meet you back here to add the rest of the ingredients. Yeah. Now that our butter and sugar have finished creaming together, I'm going to add two eggs into this mug here and just to make sure that they're good, we'll crack them into the mug and then add them right into, and right into our cookie mixture. I'm also going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract, which I'll probably measure a little bit generously. I should mention that I am also going to type out all the ingredients to this recipe in the video description in case you'd like to try making these delicious cookies yourself. I'm just going to add these two eggs right into the mixer here. And the recipe calls for a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Since we're doubling the recipe, that would be two teaspoons, but I'm really going to take this half tablespoon and we'll put it in there twice and just not fill it quite up to the top. That'll be close enough. So you can see how the beater blade really scraped down the sides of the bowl really well. The only slight negative that I would say about it is that you want to be careful not to overfill your bowl, which honestly you want to be careful not to do that anyway. I find that if my bowl is overly filled, I might get a slight bit of splashing, but really that's just knowing your, that's just knowing your tools and knowing how to use them. So overall, I've been really happy with it. Now we are going to move on and we are going to mix up our dry ingredients in this bowl here. I'm going to start with three cups of flour. I always like to not make a mess, even though that's what I just did. I always like to fluff up my flour a little bit before measuring it because that helps to make sure that you're not measuring too much flour and helps avoid an overly dense product. So to our flour, we are going to add a teaspoon of baking soda. I've got a half teaspoon here, so I'm gonna measure it twice quarter teaspoon of fine salt. I've got some fine sea salt here. And finally we need two teaspoons of baking powder. I actually, when I pulled this out of the cabinet, realized that I'm almost out of it. So we are probably going to have to do a little bit of substituting here. So we need two teaspoons of this baking powder. I'm going to start out by seeing how much I actually have. A little bit challenging to measure when you get down to the end of the container here. 
So that's a teaspoon. You know, I'm actually a lot closer than I thought I was going to be. I'm going to say about one and a quarter teaspoons, which actually works out perfectly because the substitution that I'm going to try involves using a mix of baking soda and cream of tartar. So one of the things that makes baking powder unique and kind of differentiates it from baking soda is the fact that it has both an alkaline component and an acidic component in it. Now, this baking soda is alkaline, so we want to add this cream of tartar, which is just a little bit acidic and will help kind of counteract that. If you remember from basic high school chemistry, when you combine an acid and a base, they bubble up and create air and volume, and that is kind of how baking powder works in your cookies, helps them to become light and fluffy. So that's what we're trying to replicate here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with an additional half teaspoon of this baking soda, and we then want to add a quarter teaspoon of this cream of tartar. I've only got this eighth teaspoon here, so we're just going to put two of these into our mix. Now, I have never tried this substitute before. This is probably the most common substitute for baking powder. It makes sense that it would work well, but we are going to try this out and we'll find out together how well it works. I'm just going to mix this up and then add this into the rest of our dry ingredients here. So now I'm just going to gradually add our dry ingredients into our mixer along with our wet ingredients. So I think I'll start with about half. Definitely want to do this slowly because this is a fairly stiff dough. It doesn't have a lot of liquid to absorb that flour. So if you add it all at once, you're going to get a huge cloud of flour. So as you can see, I'm just kind of pulsing my stand mixer until the flour gets a little bit moistened. And there's my oven just preheated to 375 degrees. All right, let's add the rest of this in here. So what makes snickerdoodles really special and sets them apart from other cookies is that cinnamon sugar coating that you roll them in. So I've just got a shallow tray here. You want to mix together equal parts cinnamon and sugar. So I'm going to start with a tablespoon of each, except remember instead of using regular sugar, we are going to be using our fancy vanilla sugar to take these cookies to the next level. So here's our vanilla sugar. You can see it's still got the vanilla beans in it. You can also see little flecks of black caviar. So we want to make sure to include the caviar with our sugar, but we're not going to include any of the vanilla beans. So I'm just going to pull out a tablespoon of the sugar and remove any vanilla bean pieces that get in it. And this already smells amazing. You know, vanilla and cinnamon make a delicious smelling combination. All right, so that's enough to get us started. I'll probably have to make up another batch of the cinnamon and sugar before we finish our cookies, but this will get us started and should get our first batch of cookies in the oven. So now I just want to scoop out little bits of the dough the recipe says to put them in about walnut sized pieces. I'm just going to roll them in a little bowl like this and drop them right into the cinnamon sugar tray. Once I've got a few in there, just kind of toss them around, make sure I flip them over so that every side gets coated with cinnamon sugar. And I'm gonna add these right onto the cookie sheet. You want to give them a little bit of room to expand, but they're not going to get huge. So our first batch is all ready to go in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes. I'm going to check on it starting at eight minutes just to make sure that they're not cooking faster than expected. I'll meet you back here and show you the beautiful results. So our first batch of snickerdoodles is out of the oven. 
You can see how they've just started to crack a little bit. I like to pull them out once they've started to crack, but I don't like to leave them in there too long because I prefer my cookies to be a little bit chewy rather than hard and crispy. So that's personal preference. I ended up leaving these in here for about 10 minutes, but you could certainly leave them in there longer if you prefer a crispy cookie. I'm just gonna let these cool on the baking sheet for a couple minutes, then I'm gonna move them to the cooling rack, and then I'll get our other couple batches of snickerdoodles ready and baking. I've just got to give this a try because I need to know how it is with the vanilla sugar. Mm. So good. This is a no-fail recipe. Snickerdoodles are always delicious. That vanilla sugar just adds a little extra hint of special flavor. But if you don't have vanilla sugar, these are completely delicious with regular sugar too. So good. Definitely make these. So thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen today. I wish that you could smell how amazing these snickerdoodles smell. That cinnamon smell is just so comforting for a dreary day like today. I am going to go ahead and leave a link in the video description to the Beater Blade website in case you're interested in checking that out. I have really been enjoying mine. I'm also going to type out the recipe for these snickerdoodles in the description in case you're interested in making your own. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you are inspired to try this recipe and I can't wait to see you soon. I'll see you next time.